just going to talk for about 35 minutes or so. <laughs> um, I'm really glad that nobody told me until fairly recently this thing that I was going to be appearing at because it enabled me to actually sleep last night. I didn't know that I was going to be entering Versailles and experiencing like 60,000 people here. I, I want to say one thing about Roger Ebert. I grew up in a pretty crappy working class neighborhood in Queens, New York. Some of us, oh, you're the one. Some of us, some of us like New York too, you know. Um, and, and I remember uh, my parents who had best hopes and dreams for me, which involved uh, going into computing. My father said, you know, I have a very good tip on a company called Microsoft, which you might want to look into. And of course I ignored it and went cinema. Anyway, they were not savvy at all about movies, but they always used to say, let's see what they said. And they, of course, being Cisco and Eber. And when I went to film school, I thought I was incredible. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And um, I made my first film and continued to think of myself as the greatest thing ever. And then uh, Cisco never reviewed my film. <laughs> Cisco liked it. Ebert did not. <laughs> and I remember, of course, the person who told me this was my father. He's always willing to tell me my worst reviews. And he said, you think you're a big man, don't you? <laughs> Did you see what Roger Ebert said about you? <laughs> oh, Dad. <laughs> wow, he doesn't think you're such a big shot. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so I watched it and I thought, who does he know? <laughs> but he was right. One last thing, and I promise I'll leave you alone. See, I'm just going to try and talk as long as I can to postpone you actually having to watch the film. <laughs> when I was in film school, you used to get up and make excuses about why the film didn't work, why it wasn't very good. You'd get up and you'd say, well, I had this actor and he didn't answer the ad and drama log, and so my roommate actually had to be in the film. <laughs> so I hope it's okay that he kind of sucks. And uh, I didn't really know how to focus yet, because the camera wasn't working. So it's kind of, and I thought, you know, when you finally make films, it's not going to be like that. And I walked up here, and my first instinct was to give you a whole line of excuses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, I tried, and I didn't have that. Anyway, uh, I don't get out a lot, as you can see. <laughs> the point is, it's great to be playing it here. First of all, I love Chicago. It's amazing. I walked today down Michigan and went to the parts of Chicago. It's the greatest place in the world. I love that place. I'm very happy to be here, so I really do thank you. But it is amazing to show the film in this venue, because when you see it, I think you'll understand. I'm going to use the excuses at the beginning. <laughs> I was very inspired by opera and by silent film for the movie. And it's the perfect place to show this kind of movie. You know, I go and I see them at the art light in Los Angeles. My films are projected there, and it seems all wrong. Somehow this gives it a great context. So what I'm saying is, is that if you don't like it, I have no more excuses. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. I hope you like the picture.